The Soviet moon landing has become a major point of discussion among fans of space exploration, with many old documents and designs having been dug up following the fall of the Soviet Union. Because of this, many have begun to wonder just how different things would be if the Soviets had managed to beat NASA in landing a man on the moon. Discussion is largely focused on the N1 rocket, which would have been the Soviet response to NASA's Saturn V, that is, if it ever got off the ground. But one of the lesser discussed aspects of the Soviet moon program is some of the actual hardware that would have been involved, and today we're starting off with the Khrushchev, the Soviet moon suit. During the space race, there was a constant push to perform more ambitious missions than ever before in order to one-up the other nation. First its satellites, then its crewed space flight, then a spacewalk. But you can't just throw a helmet on and pop the door open. In order to survive the vacuum of space, you need access to constant life support systems. And simple flight suits such as the one worn by Yuri Gagarin are not capable of providing the equipment necessary to maintain a human body beyond a pressurized capsule. This presented a new problem for the future of spaceflight. How do you keep a person alive in the vacuum of space while beyond a life support vehicle? And with the goal of putting a man on the moon quickly approaching, the Soviets and Americans needed to solve this problem quickly. The Soviets would manage to beat the Americans by a few months, performing the first EVA, or extravehicular activity, on the Voskhod 2 mission on March 18, 1965. Cosmonaut Alexei Leonov would become the first man to perform an EVA using the Burkut EVA suit. The Burkut was a derivative of the Vostok Sokol suit worn by Gagarin. The suit weighed about 20 kilograms, or about 44 pounds. And although the suit was tethered to the Voskhod spacecraft, the tether itself did not actually provide any life support, with the suit itself providing everything needed to keep Leonov alive in the cold vacuum of space. The suit was only capable of supporting a human for about 45 minutes, and after a brief spacewalk, Leonov began trying to re-enter the capsule. The suit had actually inflated during the spacewalk and was now too large to fit inside the airlock. Leonov ended up having to manually release oxygen from the suit in order to fit inside the airlock and safely re-enter the spacecraft. This incident, combined with the suit's limited life support power, led to this being the suit's only performance. Following Leonov's dangerously close call, the Soviets attempted to redesign the Burkut to fix its many issues and create a reliable EVA suit. This new redesign would be known as the Yastreb. The suit was largely the same as the Burkut suit. This design had a substantially longer life support time of 2.5 hours, as well as several safety improvements. The suit would only see action once on the Soyuz 4 Soyuz 5 docking mission, as the cosmonauts performed an EVA to transfer crew from one vehicle to another. Despite the EVA being successful, the suit would never see another mission, as complaints from the cosmonauts, as well as upcoming new designs, made the Yastreb seem outdated and it was quickly retired. Although the Soviets had beaten the Americans to the first spacewalk, they were doing so without really advancing their technology, relying on designs built off of the aging Vostok flight suit. But as the 1960s winded down, they began developing two new suits, which would be a huge leap forward in EVA technology, the Orlan and the Crochet. The Orlan would go on to be a very successful suit, and is still in use today. The Crochet would not be as successful. Designed as an EVA suit to support lunar missions, the Crochet would have had a life support time of 10 hours, which would be twice as high as the Orlan suit, and almost twice as high as the Apollo suit, providing more than enough time for lunar EVAs to be conducted. Although it had more life support time, it was also much heavier, being about 15 kilograms heavier than the Apollo suit, or about 34 pounds. The crochet would also be accessed through a rear hatch, meaning that the suit would not be equipped by a cosmonaut until they were ready to descend to the lunar surface. This is different from Apollo, as NASA used a more modular approach to their suit design, with different pieces being equipped during different situations. The life support backpack would also be integrated into the hatch as well. At the time, this whole system was very innovative, and compared to the more primitive flight suits the Soviets were using previously, this was a major step up. In fact, a lot of the basic design elements are still seen today in Russian suits, as well as the upcoming Artemis suit. The suit also featured a fascinating chest-mounted control panel, which had various buttons and dials that could be used to manage the suit and its consumables. It could also fold in and out of the suit for additional convenience. Due to the Apollo suit's modular approach, the Apollo suit would require external hoses to be hooked up to the suit to provide life support. Meanwhile, the Crochet's one-piece design made external hoses unnecessary, simplifying the design somewhat. The helmet, much like Apollo, would feature two separate visors. The internal would provide clear vision, while the external would be coated with gold to reflect the sunlight. 
Unlike the Apollo suit, the Crochette would not only operate on the lunar surface, but was also intended to be used in orbit of the moon, as the cosmonaut would have to perform an EVA to access the lander, unlike Apollo, which instead used a transfer tunnel approach. The suit is really impressive considering the rapid speed at which it was developed, and other than looking a lot cooler, it also appears, at least on paper, to be a better suit than the American design. It's a shame that the suit never got to fulfill its goal, with the cancellation of the N1 program and the arrival of the Orlan suit, the crochet was seemingly tossed aside. Though it may never have reached the moon, there are still a few images of the suit being used during egress testing on the LK lander, and there are also a few prototype versions of the suit available at museums around the world. Well, that was the Soviet moon suit, the Crochet. If you have any extra information about this thing, please post it in the comments below, as there is actually very little information available about it. Or if you think I made a mistake during my research, I'd be glad to correct it as well. Thanks for watching.